Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be revisiting carry lookahead adders. Now hopefully you already understand how carry lookahead logic works. The thing we're going to be talking about, though, is not how it works, but how we can make this a little bit easier to build. Because as you can see from this, just building this is ridiculous. And as you get more and more bits, because this is only a 4-bit carry lookahead adder, keep that in mind, all this wiring just gets more and more ridiculous. And at some point, it just becomes so ridiculous to wire this whole thing up that it actually becomes inefficient. So, in order to make this a little bit simpler, we're going to talk about a little component that can be used to implement carry lookahead logic that makes it a lot easier and a lot more organized. And that is called the Brent Kung cell. And we're going to start taking a look at what that is and how that works. Okay, so in order to demonstrate the Brent Kung cell, I'm going to go back to our original ripple carry adder, just to make things a little bit easier, hopefully. So here's what the Brent Kung cell does. What the Brent Kung cell will do is it will define some finalized carry data in terms of some other pre-existing carry data. And in this case, carry data is just propagate and generate signals. So for example, let's say I want to get the finalized carry data for bit 2. In this case, a Brent Kung cell would be perfectly ideal, since the only carry data that exists up to bit 2 is the data for bit 2, and the data of all the prior carry data, I guess you'd say, which is really just bit 1. So in order to get this, First off, I'd have to calculate the generate from these two and the propagate from these two, because that's what carry data is, right? It's just a generate and a propagate. So what's the generate between two bits? Well, if you remember ripple carry calculation, it's literally the same thing. So, for example, if I'm trying to find the generate of bit n, that will be the propagate of bit n and the generate of bit n minus 1, so this propagate and the generate of the bit prior to that, or if I just have a bit a generate from this bit. And that will be the finalized generate from the Brent Kong cell. So, actually I should rename the GM so that's not confusing. So finalized generate from the Brent Kong cell is propagate n and g of n minus 1, or just gn. Just to make it a little bit more clear. Now what about the propagate? Well, Here's where you sort of have to understand where the idea of Brent Kung is coming from. Because it doesn't want you to just say, okay, my previous data is this bit. It wants you to be able to say, if you want, my previous data is these two bits, or these three bits. So you can take any pre-existing calculated carry data and plug that in with some other carry data like this, and just get a finalized carry calculation just like that. And that's the idea of Brent Kung cells, and that's what makes it so amazing in implementing carry lookahead logic because it just simplifies the actual wiring and implementation immensely. So this is why propagates can sometimes be a bit confusing, but it's really not that bad. Let's say for example all my previous carry data is all these three bits and I'm calculating the finalized carry from this with a Brent Kong cell. So I take the propagate from this and combine propagates and generates from these. And now here's the thing. What's the only case where I'm going to propagate a bit all the way across these three cells? The only time I propagate across three entire bits is if all propagates are on, right? Right. So it makes sense then that the propagate of a Brent Kong cell is, so P equals the propagate of the current bit plus whatever the propagate of the previous bit was. And again, this can be potentially a combined propagate of a whole bunch of other bits, or it can just be a single bit like this. That's sort of the magic of a Brent Kong cell. And so this is really just all it is. It's just the standard generate carry calculation and a propagate calculation. But the power that comes with that is you can really easily construct adders of all sorts of different shapes and sizes and get really, really compact carry lookhead logic, or really, really fast carry lookhead logic, or really, ideally, some balance of in-between. And you can make some really amazing adders like this. So let's go ahead and build one. Why not? Okay, so 
I just went ahead and I made four wires since we're going to have four inputs, two propagates, and two generates. And I went ahead and labeled them for you. So we have generate n, generate of n minus 1, propagate of n, and propagate of n minus 1, labeled the exact same as in our equations. So let's go ahead and implement them. And I'm going to start with our finalized generate since that appears to be the most complicated calculation there is. So first off, if we have generate of n, just like that, there's our finalized output. Okay, so that's done. Now the other case is we have propagate n and g of n minus 1. So there's propagate n, there's g of n minus 1, let's build an AND gate. So, why not? I'll do my AND gate like this. There's the AND, so there you go, not A, not o, or not B, and that'll be right over the output. So there's our finalized generate calculation. So now, how do we calculate the propagate? Well, propagate of n equals, well, finalized propagate equals propagate of n and propagate of n minus 1. So, there's propagate of n, there's the inverse, so I'll invert that, or that, and there is our finalized propagate calculation. So, just like that, we have created a Brent Kong cell. So, and just to make things clear, so there's finalized generate, which I immediately break because I'm a genius, and finalized propagate, which I don't immediately break because I'm slightly smarter this time. And yeah, so I can do g of n minus 1 and g of n, and of course, this gets me a new generate because that overrides. And of course, I can also propagate a generate over, and that'll also give me a generate, even if I don't have that on. Now, if I have both propagates on, that means I'm going to have a new propagate in the final cell. So yeah, it's working just like you'd expect. And the cool thing about Brent Kong cells, like I said, is that you can take any prior carry calculation and plug that in as the previous carry calculation. And you can use combinations of those in order to get one big finalized carry calculation. And that's the real power of Brent Kong cells. And in the next video, we're going to start taking a look at how we can make these really efficient addition logic just by using these Brent Kong cells, because it can get, you can get some really impressive results, I'll put it that way. So with that all out of the way, thank you, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and really feel free to play around with these things, because you can make some really interesting addition circuits by using these. And also don't be afraid to apply this concept of defining something in terms of the previous one to really any other redstone creation, because this concept even though Brent Kung is adder specific, the concept can apply to just about any redstone device. So please, feel free to apply this to anything else, because this can really, really simplify your builds and make them a whole bunch faster or a whole bunch smaller, depending on how you set it up. So anyways, thank you, and I will see you next time.